Hello guys and welcome to the BP Gaming Network. This is our Out of the Park Baseball 19. Uh, we're doing another video tutorial. Um, today we're going to talk about the uh, minor league system. So in this video we will go through um, sort of the basics of managing your minor league uh, teams. Um, assuming you're playing an actual MLB um, uh, setup. It could be historical, it could be modern day. Uh, if you're using minor league uh, teams or the minor league system, um, this uh, this tutorial is gonna cover just, just the basics um, on how to best manage that. Um, I know for people who are not familiar with out of the park baseball or baseball in general, the minor league system can appear to be a little bit uh, overwhelming uh, but uh, we'll try and uh, ease you guys into into the whole um, arena when it comes to managing uh, minor league teams it's actually not that bad um, there are just a few things you, you you generally have to do of course there's different ways of doing things out of the park baseball is a very in-depth game uh, gives you a lot of options, so there's never just one way of doing something. Uh, but uh, in this video, I'm gonna just go through what has worked for me and what I use um, when I'm managing uh, teams. And um, you know, this, these are strategies that have worked for me. I've uh, spent a lot of time playing out of the park baseball. I've learned from others. I read a lot of forums. I've spent a lot of time researching baseball in general, understanding the the details, intricacies, the history, and so so the video will sort of have um, um, concepts that I've learned over time, and uh, and and how to apply them to uh, out of the park baseball. All right. So with that said, we'll get started. Um, first thing we're gonna do is. Uh, we'll talk about some of the settings that I use or that I have when I'm managing uh, a team that has the uh, minor league system. So we will go through those settings uh, right now. All right. So from the main page or what's called the manager's office page, uh, the first thing I do once I set up my game, uh, once I go through my usual basic uh, uh, setup, um, I come out and go into the manager options all right and the first thing I do when I go into the manager options is uh, and this is when I'm trying to set up my settings for my uh, minor league teams to the right here you can see under team control settings uh, I tells you sort of who's in charge of what so you could see it says uh, you currently manage the Miami Marlins, which is uh, the, the MLB team that we're managing. Uh, your bench coach is Tim Wallach, and it tells you here that uh, the assistant general manager is uh, Michael Hill. Below that, you've got a whole bunch of settings, all right? Um, a whole bunch of them here have to do with um, overall, you know, management of the, of the, of the entire organization that you're managing at the bottom here you will see there's a few um, settings that are concerned with your minor league team so for, for example you've got uh, minor league uh, free agent signing and releases you always want to have everything at least in my opinion set up to be managed by you so if you notice the name of the of the manager here for the team is Wayne Hanicut so I'm Wayne Hanicut <laughs> And I am controlling every aspect of this game except for the last setting, which is the minor league lineups, depth charts, and pitching staff. For that, I've got the um, I've got the minor league managers. I left it as minor league managers to to manage the lineups, the depth charts, and the pitching staff. Now, if you notice, uh, MLB teams have uh, quite a few minor league teams, and it's already. Um, challenging enough just managing the lineups and the depth charts setting up your lineups for your own MLB team like for example me setting up the Miami Marlins um, uh, lineups and depth charts I have to do that consistently now you don't want to do that for every single team that you have in your organization so when it comes to lineups and the lineups it's not really that big of a deal this is something you can actually let your minor league managers take care of they can they can assign what player is going to play today if there's injuries um 
they can make decisions on who's going to play it, uh, who's going to sit on the bench. They can make decisions on uh, which pitching staff, uh, who's going to be a uh, starting pitcher, who's going to be um, a relief pitcher. You do have overriding control, and I'll show you guys how you do that over those decisions as well. But you don't need to manage all that. So for that setting, it's the only thing that I let the minor league managers uh, manage. You notice everything else, we have myself or Wayne Honeycutt as the manager, basically taking control of the entire organization. All right, after that, I come into the left side of the panel here. You see why it says exit autoplay. This is important because there's gonna be times when you're gonna uh, simulate games. Now, my strategy for playing out of the park baseball is I play out some games, I simulate, uh, simulate um, certain games. So I don't play out every single game. Otherwise, 162, 160 something games a season, it's a long season to play out every single game. So what I do, I play out certain games, um, it's my choosing, and then sometimes I will sim the game maybe a week. Um, and let let the uh, let the sim engine take over. So while you're doing that, and while you're moving forward into your season, um, you want to have certain triggers that will notify you of certain decisions that you need to take or certain actions that you need to take, uh, pertaining especially to your minor league teams. So when you start a game, these two checkboxes are typically unchecked, if I'm correct. The notify injuries on minor league teams as well is usually unchecked. And I believe the, uh, when a player suffers a day-to-day -day injury is always usually unchecked if I'm not wrong. I like to make sure that I check those. So my advice is make sure you check those too. The reason for that is this one here is for your overall management. So for example, um, how at what point do I want to be notified when certain players, even though they're not in the um, major league team, when do I want to be notified when they're injured? I don't want to be notified over minor day-to-day -day injuries, and I don't want the um, uh, the sim engine to to exit autoplay um, just because somebody's got a two-day minor injury. So I usually put uh, either three days or five days so if somebody is going to be out for at least five days, that's that's a sort of a serious injury. Um, maybe it may not be serious in that in the, in the, in the sense that it may not be severe, but five days is a long time um, to have a play on the bench. So that may want me to take a second look at that particular player and see if there's something we can do. Maybe we need to bench him if the uh, AI is not going to bench him. So you can have it three days or five days. I nowadays I do five days. And I change this to say when there is a moderate performance drop, not just small performance drop. So I want to be notified when the performance drop in a player is is moderate. So that means I don't want the computer to leave a player who's got a day to day injury uh, lasting at least five days and it's moderate. I don't want them out there batting when the effectiveness has been reduced or diminished. So I make that change there, but most importantly for your minor league uh, teams, make sure you change this here into a check mark. Notify injuries on minor league teams as well. All right, so once you've got that entered in, um, you, uh, you go back to your main page. The next settings that you've got to change are you go into your MLB um, um, column here or menu and then you select uh, league settings at the bottom here and then what you do is you go into rules the rules tab right here and while you're here you're gonna go and uh, to the right panel here or drop down menu and select the diff uh, all the different uh, minor league leagues that you have in your save or in your game and you're gonna change certain settings to make sure you create the best uh, realism or the best um, uh, playing experience that is much more realistic um, as you can make it. So what you do, the first thing is uh, you select the International League. And while we're here, I'm just gonna explain this. So if you notice in this particular save, this is a modern day MLB and I already know all the leagues that are there in modern day MLB minor league systems. Uh, we have 
two AAA teams, the International and the Pacific Coast League. We have three AA leagues, which is the Eastern League, the Southern League, and the Texas League. And then we have three advanced single A teams, which is the California League, the Carolina League, and the Florida State League. And then we have two single A uh, leagues, which is Midwest and the South Atlantic. And then you've got two low A or uh, lower A um, uh, teams or leagues, sorry, which is the New York Penn League and the Northwest League. And then you've got five rookie leagues. You've got the Appalachian League, you got the Pioneer Rookie League, you got the Arizona Rookie League, the Gulf Coast Rookie League, and the Dominican Rookie League. So you're gonna make the following changes um, for each league in order to make sure that, that your game is as realistic as possible. So we're gonna start with the International League here, the AAA. And all you're gonna change is the number of uh, active roster size limit. You always wanna make that to 25, all right? So I'll quickly explain this. For all the teams or for all the leagues, all the way up to your single A. So every league until the Southern, I mean the South Atlantic League, you're gonna make sure the active roster size limit is 25 players. The rest will already be pre-selected for you. Nowadays, the uh, the d disabled list um, length for minor league teams is seven days. So you do that for each one of the leagues until you get to the Southern Atlantic League. All right. This is very important. This is crucial. Now, after the Southern Atlantic South Atlantic League. <laughs> Uh, the next league is the New York Penn League, which is the low, lower A league. You're going to make sure the active roster size is now 35 players, not 25 anymore. You're going to increase that to 35. And then the other low A league, which is the Northwest League, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to have 35 players on there. Make sure the limit is 35. Now, the remainder, which is all your rookie leagues, the the remaining five rookie leagues, you have to make sure that the active roster size has a no limit. Make sure this doesn't have a number and it says no limit for all your rookie leagues. This is crucial um, and, and uh, out of the park baseball will always explain this to you. Always, there's a, there's a notice here. Do not set the roster limit of the lowest minor league level to below 35, okay? So all your rookie leagues, make sure that they don't have a roster limit. That's all, that's it you have to do. Once you've changed all that, I mean, the other changes that you could make, but you don't need to really do much, uh, minor league teams, are designed, uh, they come pre-populated with certain uh, restrictions and conditions by Out of the Park Baseball. Uh, you don't need to really change a lot. That's all you need to change. And once you've done that, your minor league system settings are complete and set. All right. So we will now move on and start looking at the individual teams. We will talk about um, how do you know when is the right time to... Um, to promote a player, for example, from one level to another, when is the right time to demote a player, and so on and so on. Before we do that, we're gonna uh, take take a little bit of time here and um, and just go through the different um, minor league teams that are on this particular team. So you can see at the top that will always be your AAA team. So you have one AAA team, which is the New Orleans uh, Baby Cakes. And then we've got the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. That's our double A team. And you've got your Jupiter Hammerheads, which is our advanced A. And if you want to know that you've set your settings correctly, if you go into rosters and transactions, you will see that the active roster limit is set now with a maximum of 25. And it will show you the ones that are currently assigned to the team. Um, and then you go to your Greensboro green, uh, Grasshoppers. Um, that's our single A team. Our low A team is the Batavia Mac Dogs. 
um, that's the low A. And then you got two rookie leagues. We've got the Gulf Coast Rookie League. So it's going to be GCL, Miami GCL. And then you've got your Dominican Rookie League. It's going to be your Miami DSL League right there. So those are all the minor league uh, teams that we have in our system. Some teams have more than others. So don't, don't think that every, every team has to have the same number. Uh, for example, New York has a lot more uh, uh, rookie leagues in their system. I believe so does the New York Mets and a few other teams. Some have less. It's just the way it is. But if you're playing a modern day save, pre primarily, they will all have at least one triple A team, one double A team, one advanced A, one regular single A, one lower A, and two rookie leagues at the very minimum, rookie teams at the very minimum. All right, so the first thing that you want to do, I usually do a bottom to top um, analysis of my uh, minor league system. And what that means is before I start the season, while I started, once I've started up the game, before we hit advance and start a season, you must first make sure you, you you've taken a uh, you've done a small analysis on your minor league teams. Now you don't have to consistently analyze your minor league system. Um, I will explain to you when are the best times to come in and and do reviews from time to time. Um, if you recall why we l made that uh, check mark to say notify us when a minor league player is injured, that is one of the triggers. So for example, as you continue to play the game, you will notice sometimes you'll get a notification saying so and so is injured from your double A team. So what you do is you basically go into your double A team and uh, you uh, identify the player that's injured. And once you did, you know, I mean, I don't have anybody injured here, but I've got two guys who are injured here, for example. Um, so you'll see a player, he'll be highlighted in red. And if you put your um, uh, mouse cursor around them, it will tell you the player and it will kind of show you how long or, or what type of injury they have and for how long. Now, if I have a player, um, for example, these, this guy here, this guy, Jumbo Diaz, is out for three months. Okay, so I would put him on the DL, seven day DL, and he can sit there until he's uh, fully healed. And if because he's going to be out for three months, I need to bring somebody else up here to back him up. He's a relief pitcher, so that means we're short a relief pitcher. So what I would do typically is I'm currently analyzed, so he's, he's an injured player from my double uh, A team. I would go down to the next level below that. So I would go, to, for example, to my advanced A, and you can see they're all grouped according to the level, the highest AAA and the lowest um, your rookie leagues. So I would, if uh, if it's a double AA, double A player that's injured, I would go to the advanced A, which is the next level down, and I would take a look at a player in the same position who I can bring up. So um, I would go in here and I would take a look to see if the season, if we're already, let's say, a couple months into the season, then I can look at the stats to see who's been playing well, who's performing well. Um, you look at the combination of two things. You always look at the potential ratings and you look at the stats. Now, the potential ratings tell you that these are some guys who have good potential to become decent players in the future. These are the guys you want to keep a close eye on. So, for example, if I come down here and I want to see whom should I promote, I need a pitcher because I've got a pitcher who's injured in double A. Now, I've got Jorge Guzman here who's got very good uh, future potential. I would take a look at him and see... Uh, what are his stats at this level? Looks like he's been pitching really well. All right, Jorge Guzman. He's got a 3.63 ERA, and he's got a very high uh, potential. This is a guy I want to develop, and I want to make sure I control his development. So I would go ahead and promote him. Excuse me, into my Double A team to take uh, to take the place of the injured player. All right. So that's one way that you. Um, that you from time to time um, get a notification and because of circumstances like injuries or suspensions and things like that you get a chance to now come in and promote a player all right that is one way not just the only way 
So what I do generally is, uh, let's say we're starting a new season and, uh, you know, we, um, we haven't really played out games. So what I do is I go to my lowest rookie league, which is my Miami DSL, uh, Dominican rookie team. And I go into rosters and transactions, and then I filter this out based on potential. Okay. So I'm only focusing on potential. All right. So here is some, uh, some information on why that is the case. When you have young players, all right, the younger the players are and the lower they are in, in, in development. So for example, the rookies, you're not so much focused on their current rating or current overall rating because they're young and developing. So the current rating doesn't really tell you how good a player is. We're not worried about how well they perform today. We're worried about how good can they be in the future because they're typically, if you're looking at your rookie league, then this is something else I should probably point out. So if you're guessing or trying to wonder what are the sort of the age, um, the age range for players in the different minor league teams, um, your rookie, t rookie leagues, uh, typically will have players that are right out of high school and players that are right out of college. So these are players who just recently got drafted or players who've just recently uh, been uh, um, recruited um, out of the international free agency. They are typically young players. They will be between the ages of 17 and 20. Okay. That is the general um, concept. So if you take a look at this team, just like I said, if you look at all the players, if I filter the players by age, the oldest player here is 23, and then there's one who's 22, and there's two who are 20, 21. Everybody else is either 20, 19, 18, and 17, okay? So that's generally who's gonna make up your um, rookie teams. Um, you'll have high school players who are drafted and agreed to sign a contract. Uh, they'll, they'll, when, as soon as they get drafted and they agree to sign a contract with the team, they get sent out to the rookie leagues uh, or rookie teams. It is up to you to decide exactly where you want to place them. If you want to send them to Dominican or if you want to send them to the Gulf Coast, it's your call. All right, You can move them around as you please. This is the fun thing about, about out-of-the-park baseball. Um, once uh, players start to develop in your rookie leagues, uh, when they start to show good potential and 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 promise, then you're gonna promote them usually to your uh, single A teams. Uh, the first level team the, the uh, for promotion usually is your lower A, your minus A. The low A is usually a short season league. Okay, they don't play a full season. Their games start in June, okay? That's one thing to keep in mind. So anytime you see your low A, so let's go here, uh, Batavia Mat Dogs, that's our low A. And you'll always tell it's a low A because it's got an A minus, all right? If you look at the schedule, their games will usually start in June and in September, okay? So you can see there, they just play a short season. If you go to your other other teams, for example, let's go to our single A team, our general A team. You could tell their season started in April, right? See that? So when you're um, something to, so that is something to keep in mind. So when I'm in uh, my rookie teams and I'm trying to promote players, if I got a whole bunch of good and talented players who have really good potential, um, I don't want to stack all of them up in my um, low A. Some guys can go into the low A and play a short season there. Some guys can go into a single A. All right. It's your call. Uh, generally, these players will now be somewhere around 21 years old, 21, 22. Um, <clears throat> you'll find them in your single A teams. Um, the advanced A will usually have your 22s um, up to maybe even your uh, 23s. Um, but, but generally 21 to 22 is the players you're going to find in your single A. Uh, players who, who are showing very good potential, 
um, who are playing well, they will now get advanced to your double A team. So players in your double A team will be usually around 23, 24 years old. Um, they can be even up to all the way up to 25 years old. And then you've got your um, triple A team. Now, the players in your AAA team should be players that are pretty good, uh, that have a very high potential, um, or have been performing exceedingly well, and have what we would say um, possibility of making it into the major leagues. You shouldn't promote players into your AAA team if you don't think there's any chance that they will ever develop into decent players. So guys who have a good chance of becoming good players that can play in a major league team will end up in your AAA team. Another thing, thing to keep in mind, not all players in your minor league universe will advance necessarily to the higher levels. Some players will just, maybe it's just not meant to be for them. Uh, their performance, their age, as they age and they're not performing well, those will be telltale signs that maybe this guy is just not meant to be so as the manager you'll have to take the responsibility of releasing this guy these guys in order to create room in your minor league system you don't want to have a minor league system that is clogged up remember each year you draft players and mlb you draft a lot of players not just two or three players like in other sports so you always want to have um <clears throat> availability so that the good players can get a chance to develop um, because only way players develop in this game or in real life is by playing so you have to make sure you're creating room for your players to develop especially the ones that have good capability for development all right so and how do you tell well combination of two things so we'll go back to what I do when I'm setting up my, um, when I'm starting a new league. So I go to my lowest rookie um, team and I, and I filter the right column based on potential. And then I take a look at the guy with the most potential or the few guys with the most potential. So for example, Edward Cabrera, he's a starting pitcher. Um, you could see he's got uh, fairly decent potential for the future. Um, again, we're not worried about his overall, the current overall. I don't care about that so much. I care about his potential. I care about some of his ratings. So pitchers, you want to go and tell and, and take a look at the deeper ratings. So this guy, I can already tell he's a power pitcher. So I like that. He's got a 96 to 98 mile per hour uh, pitch arsenal. And so far at this age, he's got a fastball. His fastball is... Um, rated as uh, above average right now it can get to um, plus average in the future he's got a slider that is below average at the moment but it can get up to plus average in the future and here's a change up that is well below average but it can also get to above average in the future so um, this is uh, this is a guy you can see why he's got the the um, the potential which is higher than some of the other players um, so I take a look to see, all right, does he have a spot on the current roster? So what you do is you go into actions and you go, you tell your staff to update the players and look at that. The coach for this team has already pegged this guy to be the, the, the number one pitcher in the starting rotation. So they're also looking at the same potential that I'm looking at. And, and they've identified him and given him a role. So I'm gonna let him sit here and develop. He's 20 years old, um, um, he's already played in the league, um, he's already been um, in the system. You could see he's played in the Gulf Coast League before in 2016. He played in the New York Penn League, which is the low A. He didn't pitch very well, and then you can tell that uh, he got uh, <clears throat> demoted um, or went into South Atlantic League. Um, in 2018 and now he's found his way back into the rookie league rookie system um, you can bump him up um, at this point I'm thinking this guy can actually go back up to um, low A or even a single A team he doesn't necessarily need to be here I think he's, he's shown that he can actually pitch um, and, and given his age at 20 um, I'm thinking he doesn't necessarily need to be here. So I'm going to move him up. 
And so what I do is I'm going to go into the team where I want to send him and see, oh, look at that. They're already full. They got 35 players out of 35. So what I'm going to do, I need to create space for him. All right. So what I do is I'm going to take a look to see who doesn't need to be here. Uh, in other words, which player has um, a low future potential and also low statistics and in addition is already of an age that um, is too old to develop so this is this is our low a and we've got a guy here who's 28 years old for example Tyler Cravey his overall is a half a star and his potential is half a star so right away I can tell this guy um, something just is not been working with him um, you could see he's already been around the league uh, a few times he's uh, played in the MLB in 2015 he made his debut uh, he pitched in 42 and two-third innings gave up 5.7 uh, zero runs per uh, per game so um, not a good showing and then he got uh, demoted the following season to triple a he struggled there in 56 and one third innings uh, somehow he got called back up to the mlb uh, playing for milwaukee and uh, he pitched okay in 28 and one third innings and uh, then he got demoted again uh, to triple a and he seemed to have struggled there so a very inconsistent player um doesn't seem to to have much of a future in my opinion uh his ratings are not crazy bad that's the funny part and this is the this is the cool thing about this game is that you can have a guy who has good ratings but he may just not materialize into what everybody hopes he will the ratings always think of them as the raw ability the natural ability of a player some guys have raw talent but it never materializes when it comes to to actually putting it um, in play and this this seems to be one of those guys so let me see if he has a contract he doesn't have a contract he's out of the option years um, it's incumbent at this point for me to think um, he may never develop again you can even read the scouting report so you can go through a whole bunch of information in order to really evaluate a guy before you make a decision um, now when I take a look at his um, when we take a look at his scouting report a couple things stick out we're gonna look at his overall ratings um, looks like uh, a, the the bar graph here shows that his overall stuff um, increased or, or got better um, when I look at his uh, control that seemed to have diminished and his movement is plateaued at uh, just below average there the uh, summary on him Tyler Cravey is a 28 year old right hander from Martinez California he can top out at 90 to 92 miles per hour he's a relief pitcher he has a three pitch arsenal uh, with his uh, money pitch uh, an above average fastball um, what else is said about him Cravey is best suited for a relief role in the minors uh, left-handed hitters fare better against him because he has difficulty pitching effectively inside on them so something about him just looks like he should be a, 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 an okay player at the, at the minimum um, but that's never materialized so we can do two things we can release him or we can just demote him right now I'm more concerned about promoting uh, young players that have a future so what I'm gonna do with this guy is I'm gonna send him back down to the um, rookie league, um, the Gulf Coast rookie, uh, rookie rookie league team, and let him sit there for a bit. We never know when uh, at a different time we may come across him and uh, bump him up. So now I've got some room now in my low A uh, minor league team. So we've got 34 players out of 35. Um, so now I can go back down to my Dominican rookie team and we can go back and check out my guy that I was talking about. So Edward Cabrera, today's your day. 
um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, promote him to the low A Batavia there you go he's feeling good he's happy uh, got a promo there and then when you come back you can uh, just hit the action button and, to, and then just get your staff to update the uh, the rosters I just like to visually see that to make sure you know every team is uh, set up properly by, by my managers I go back to every team that you made a change um, on you want to just go in and make sure that uh, you know the the lineups and the depth just and everything else is just set up you don't need to do much just click the button that tells them to to do it and they do it and, and, and you're good to go so there you go guys that's a one little example of how um, you start to analyze your your minor league teams so we were in our lowest team and um, you know for potential um, these are some of the other guys that have some some okay potential like one and a half star for example, uh, Brian Campos, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, he's a catcher. So we're going to come here into the um, batting lineups and take a look to see if he is uh, pegged to be a starter. And, and look at that, Brian Campos is a starter, uh, he's 19 years old. So because he doesn't have like an amazing level of potential, it's just one and a half star. I'm going to leave him here, he's 19 years old, we're going to let him stay here and develop. The other guy is uh, Dalvi Rosario, young player, he's 17 years old, looks like he just recently got, uh, so he was just signed as an international free agent by Miami um, in 2016. Um, so he's also um, uh, already in the lineup. You could see his, uh, his color is green, uh, illuminated green. Everybody in green means they are in the starting lineup, in the, in, in the depth charts. So, so you can see all the guys with the higher potential, they've already been uh, assigned a starting role on this team. So for now, uh, being sort of, let's say, early in the season, um, I don't need to make too many other movements. Nobody else really stands out as far as future potential. So that's about it. This team looks to be okay for now. Um, not much to do with it. Um, and keep in mind as well before the season starts for this team which will start in June um, there will be um, um, there will be a draft for the first year draft MLB first year draft which happens typically at the beginning of June and after that draft this team will be filled out with more players so after the draft you have to come back into your lowest rookie league teams and try to move players around uh, promote those who are performing well um, and uh, release anybody who looks like he's a dud and is not going anywhere uh, take a look at your new draftees and see what their potential looks like if they have high potential then go ahead and maybe move them a notch uh, to the next one level and uh, just to make sure they're in a team where they can get playing time that's the most important thing uh, you can leave them here um, you know you can move some leave some um, just make sure that you're not skipping a level where a new player who's never played professional baseball finds himself at a much higher level than they shouldn't be you know you're not doing justice for yourself these players need to develop so you've got to give them a chance somewhere to develop but you've got a few teams at the bottom that you can play around with in order to to give each one of your good high potential young athletes a chance to develop so we're gonna go into the Gulf Coast uh, team and take a look to see who's really good here so we've got uh, we've got a few players with uh, two um, two stars potential and they're all assigned a starting role already on this team so I'm not uh, really worried about making any changes here I've got 39 players um, I've got 32 pitchers you can see at the corner here it tells you how many pitchers you have and uh, looks like we have 14 um, uh, <clears throat> defensive players or position players so that's sort of a, not a good thing so we're gonna need to come back to uh, the Dominican rookie team and try to move guys around so what I do is I use the same potential rating um, as a way of judging uh, which players I'm gonna move around um, I tend to the way I group my minor league teams is the Dominican League of the lowest one 
Um, even though they're all at the same level, they're both rookie leagues, not one is better than the other. But in my head, just so that I can manage things better, I tend to tell myself, okay, for example, I play with the A's, and when I'm playing uh, with the A's team, they, they don't have a team in the Gulf Coast. Uh, they have a team that's uh, a rookie league that's in the Dominican Re League and the Arizona uh, Rookie League. So the Dominican Rookie League for me is the entry level Rookie League. All my newest players, everybody who's discovered from international free agency, um, anybody who is drafted, they will automatically go into the Dominican Rookie League. I go in there and filter out. I check out some of the really good players, um, uh, especially the ones who are out of college, for example, and they're already in their 20 years old, and I bump them up into the Arizona Rookie League. Now, again, like I said, it's just for um, it, 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 mentally, I tell myself that Arizona uh, Rookie League is the next step up, even though it's not. But I do that so that I spread out the really good, talented players and the new draftees with high potential, make sure they're plugged in somewhere where they can get some starting roles and get as many chances to play as they can. So that's, that's basically, in general, what you do with your minor league teams. You always, like I said, focus on the potential, um, and you want to move players who have very high potential, uh, put them in positions or in teams where they can develop. But all I can say is don't take a player from the rookie leagues who's never played a game of professional baseball, for example, let's take a look. We got some guys here. If I take a look, some of the 17-year-olds, some of them have never played a single uh, single day in professional baseball. So like this guy, empty stats, never played professional baseball. Don't take a guy like this and move him into your single A team. In, in my own personal opinion, I, I find that not to be a smart move. Let him sit around here in, in the rookie system and develop there. Um, so what I do is, you know, I would go into my the, into my uh, next up uh, rookie league team. In this case, for Miami Marlins, we're going to say it's the, um, the Gulf Coast team. All right, the GCL one. And I'm going to take a look at guys who are um, a little bit older and uh, have already been playing in different uh, seasons and see who needs to be promoted to the next level, okay? Um, right off the bat, I don't see any, any high uh, potential guys. Um, the most potential that we have here is two stars. And uh, these are young guys who just 22 and uh, they haven't been playing well. Like look at Colton, um, looks like he struggled the last time that he was uh, sent to Batavia. And maybe that's why he was sent back down. Um, you could see he started out in the uh, in the rookie league uh, team uh, in 2017. He didn't pitch very well, and so he struggled. Um, he was given a chance to go to a, a low A, Batavia. He struggled there. Now he's back to the rookie leagues again. So, all right. So that's how I move players. Then I go into the next step, which is my low A team. And um, I take a look at all the players that I have here. Um, first, I'm looking at guys who need to be advanced. So I start with my pitching staff. Um, I, again, filtering based on potential. Look at Andy Beltre, right? Look at this guy. He's a closer. Um, he's got an elite level fastball, an elite level slider. He's got two pitches and they're both outstanding. His pitching staff, is amazing he's got a plus average um uh bad i mean plus uh stuff which can get to elite level stuff that is outstanding his movement is below average can get to average and he doesn't have the greatest of control um this is a picture that we can see pitching in the mlb at some point uh if you take a look at his scouting report um, Beltre is a 24-year-old minor league relief, uh, reliever pitcher. Uh, he projects to have a repertoire that includes a slider, which is a strikeout pitch and an elite fastball. Everyone raves about his elite stuff. Beltre is a mop-up type of uh, uh, type who walks the thin line between big league employment and the minors, without no standout skill. So he's 24 years old. He's got uh, you know decent ratings for a closer. 
Um, I'm not sure what he's doing in sing in low A. He's had a uh, few seasons um, in the minor league system. And uh, if we take a look at his history, okay, no data found. Looks like he became a professional in 2012. Um, and uh, he's played in uh, different for different teams in the um, advanced A, low A, and the single A level. And he also spent some time in the double uh, uh, A team. So right off the bat, this is a guy that needs to be promoted. See how we identified him? We were looking at guys with high potential. We came across this guy with the highest potential in the team. And we looked at his age. He's 24 years old. Um, he definitely shouldn't be here. Um, just based on his skills, ability, his potential, and the fact that he's already spent quite a bit of time developing and pitching in the minor league systems. So where does he belong? Well, if you kind of want to use... Um, if you want to use maybe the age range that I talked about, so we said uh, in your double A, you'll find guys who are 23, 24, up to maybe 25 years old. And then in your triple A, you'll find players who are 25, 26, and, and above. They could be even older, but the average age in triple A generally is about 26 years old. So given that uh, he hasn't spent a lot of time in double A, I think this is a guy that needs to be in double A. So... What I'm going to do, I'm going to check to see if there's room for him in double A. We're going to go here. And no, there's not. You can see we, we have a limit of 25 players and we already have 25 players. So I'm going to go into the pitching staff because uh, he's a pitcher and we need to create room for him um, from the pitching staff. All right. So when you start um, looking at your higher minor league teams, for example, your double A and your triple A, you're now going to... To, uh, put take a closer look at not just the potential but also the ratings and also the stats so those three things now become important not just mo mainly one thing if it's your lower uh, teams like in the single a and the rookie league teams you mainly just look at the potential and you can live with poor stats as long as the potential is still high and the ratings look okay when you come to your double A, but, but, but primarily, especially when you're dealing with your triple A, uh, statistics become huge. So you're no longer just looking at potential because by now you've got guys who are already 26, 27 years old. Um, they may not have a lot more time left for them to develop or grow. They are pretty much at their peak of their potential. So if you try to look at potential at this uh, uh, level, it's not gonna it's gonna be misleading I'm not saying ignore it I'm just saying now you have to take into account different things you want to take a look and say okay this guy has already reached his near his limit for for growth and he's reaching his limit for potential how has he been playing based on all the development he's, he's had what is his performance what, what what are we getting out of him you also I usually do take a look at age and I try to get rid of players who are ex extremely old and because there's no more room for them to develop. So if they're not pitching well or playing well, then um, I probably don't have, um, don't have to keep them around. And like I said, they're taking up room for younger guys who could come up here and uh, give us a better chance. So I identify right off the bat one guy. We've got Joe Blanton. Okay, so we're going to take a look at Joe and see what can we do with Joe. Remember, I need to create um, uh, I need to create some room in my double A team so that I can bring up uh, one closer who is really outstanding that we noticed. Um, so we're going to take a look at Joe here. He's got a lot of ratings. He's got a huge pitching arsenal. None of it stands out. Virtually all his pitching um, or all, all his pitches are just below average and don't have a lot of room for growth. His stuff is well below average. His movement is really well, well below average. His control is decent. He's got uh, above average uh, control. Um, how has he performed over the years? So there's many ways that we can assess this guy. You can go into his pitching stats and you get a whole lot of statistics. This guy's been in the league for a long time. He's 37 years old. 
Um, what I like to do usually from the profile page, when you're looking at a player, I like to go into the BNN page, okay? When I go into the BNN page, things are a little bit more summarized, and that's what I like about it. So you could see um, this guy, um, wow, he's been, he's been in the league for a long time. Um, he became a professional uh, in 2002, uh, playing for Vancouver, I believe that's Vancouver Canadians, uh, in the low A team, and then he advanced from there. Um, his uh, history while playing the minor league uh, system has been um, sort of up and down. If you look at take a look at his totals for PCL, PCL is the Pacific Coast, which is a AAA league. Um, he's uh, sort of pitched okay throughout his minor league system, except in uh, maybe the California League where he had a very short stint uh, in six innings, um, gave up 7.50 uh, ERA. That's a very short sample, um, so not going to judge him too much based on that. Um, let's, uh, so he's had some highlights. If you take a look at his leader, leaderboard appearances, he's had moments when, uh, when he shined. Um, if we take a look at his MLB career, his total MLB um, career, his average 4.38, uh, which is uh, which is the average in uh, in Major League Baseball. That's the average uh, ERA for most pitchers, whether starter or bullpen. And so, by the looks of that, we can summarize and say there's really nothing exceptional about him. You know, um, nothing really stands out. Uh, you can see his uh, pitching velocity. Uh, he can top up to about 90 miles per hour. Um, not great in modern day MLB. Um, so, you know, I mean, I'm just, I'm looking to see if anything stands out as really exceptional about him. Um, is he a specialist? Does he have any, any anything unique that, that could help the, the major league team? Because that's what we're looking for at this age in AA and AAA. I don't think there is. This is a 37-year-old who who's had an average career in uh, in MLB. He's had a long career. Um, he's not costing us any money right now, and um, I just feel like he's just uh, taking up some space um, unnecessarily. So now you're gonna witness us do something. So uh, based on his age, he's 37 years old, and um, there's no hope at least in my opinion, um, for this guy. I don't see us calling him up. Um, the Miami Marlins are not a playoff team right now. And if we're not a playoff team, we're going to spend our time developing younger players and not um, not giving veterans who are past their prime uh, playing opportunity. So this is what we're going to do with this guy. We're going to release him. All right. So Joe Blanton is no longer playing for the Miami Marlins. Uh, thank you very much for a good career and, uh, you know, 11 years service. But um, that's about it. We're going to release him. So he's gone. So now if we go back, check out our roster transactions here, we've got now room for a player to come up. So we got 24 players out of 25. So we go back to, um, it was the Batavia. And it was Andy Beltre. So we're going to promote Andy to AA. Because we just created room there. And uh, I feel that he could play in AA. He's already spent uh, quite a bit of time playing in single A at different levels. And uh, he's got the skills and the potential to really, um, at some point, pitch in, uh, in a major league team. So there you go. We have promoted... Um, we promoted Andy to double A. So we're going to come back here. Now, if you notice for our low A, we now have room for a player because now we got 34 players out of 35. So first, I'm going to go to my double A team, go into pitching and ask my uh, manager here to set up the role. And look at that. Andre Beltre gets the closer role in our double A team. So not a surprise. So that's generally 
how you how you do that that's how you move around guys then we're gonna go back down where we made the change which is Batavia Mac dogs and go into the uh, pitching uh, stuff ask the coach to uh, set up the stuff again and then we're gonna go back down to our rookie league the next level below which happens to be the uh, Miami GCL the Go uh, Gulf Coast rookie team and we're gonna take a look at uh, who can we bring up so how do you make that decision how do you determine who you're gonna bring up um, again because we're talking lower levels keep in mind single A and rookie we start off first by checking out potential so we do a little filter for potential and right away we get a bunch of guys who've got good potential so now we start looking at each one of them first thing I do is I look at the age all right so we've got a couple 22 year olds um, amongst the high potential and for now we're looking at these three guys who have uh, two stars uh, the rest um, there's a few guys with one and a half stars but we're gonna focus on, on the three guys with the two stars so Colton um, we're gonna take a look at him and um, let's see uh, his um, his pitching potential uh, nothing great his stuff just estimated to become just above average in the future movement just average his control looks like that will always sort of be a struggle for now um, he has three pitches nothing really stands out just a fastball um, that can get up to 90 to 92 miles per hour uh, his statistics uh, although very uh, my, uh, very um, few um, number of innings that he's pitched in for us to really really gauge and judge him um, nothing sticks out there so we're gonna go to the next guy Tyler Kolek same age he's 22 years old um, he's got uh, just a notch slightly better ratings you know his stuff again uh, currently mediocre can get up to just like above average in the future movement can also get average in the future um, he's got a fastball that can get up to 94 miles per hour actually up to 96 miles per hour 94 to 96 and it's currently rated as uh, just above average and it can get to an elite level fastball his slider can also get to currently it's average and it can get to um, plus average slider so so not bad uh, for this 22 year old starting pitcher um, he's uh, he throws right and uh, his last few stunts have all um, not been great although he's pitched 108 innings and two-third 108 and two-third innings uh, in single a he had an area of 4.56 so um, so he's a, he's a potential candidate for being sent up um, let's take a look at Trevor Rogers Trevor's ratings are not the best um, nothing really will stand out in the future as far as his judgment as of today um, he's 20 years old uh, he's pitched already in single A just had uh, pitched in eight and a third innings and had uh, an area of 3.24 so out of three these three guys with a somewhat high uh, potential Tyler Kolek stands out for me he looks like the guy who who may have a better chance so I'm gonna give him an even better chance to prove himself so I'm gonna send him up to the low A Batavia where we had an opportunity for somebody to go up there all right so there you go and then we're just gonna do the same thing we're gonna ask the uh, manager to update all the rosters and then we're gonna go back to Batavia um, it's a pitching change and there you go the managers updated the pitchers and uh, Tyler Kolek became a starting pitcher in low A so um, so that's generally how you go around making decisions so um, like I said you will get notifications telling you there's a guy who's been injured that is one way for you to go into your different teams and move guys around so if a guy's injured and looks like he's gonna be out for even two weeks let's say um, that's that's a long time we can have somebody take over his spot to to develop there's no need to waste that space so I would put that guy on the DL 
um, and then I would go to the next level below. So we're talking about minor league teams here. So let's say it was a guy who was in my double A team. I would put him in the DL. I would go to my advanced A team and see who's who's playing well, who deserves who deserves a chance to be brought up to double A. And when the other guy, if he's a good player, once he heals, then we can send the same guy down, or we can send somebody else who's who really sucks. We can send him back down, and and that's how you do. So you your job is to constantly make sure that your teams have the right players in them um, and that you're developing players that need to be, to develop uh, players that have a high potential. You're keeping an eye on those guys um, and, and you're bringing them up at the right times. So um, so we just did a quick analysis of the low A and we didn't identify anybody who's uniquely special here. So then we'll go to our single A team, which is the uh, Greensboro Grasshoppers. And uh, right away, we can see we've got uh, Alejandro Chasin, a 24-year-old um, closer. And uh, if we take a look at him, wow, okay, so this guy um, pitched in the MLB at some point. Uh, he's from Venezuela. Um, he's got uh, he's got a decent potential. Um, he has a three pitch arsenal, and uh, his pitching ratings are not too bad. Look at his stuff there; it's just average. It can get in the future to just above average. Movement is average. Control just just about average. Uh, in the future, that is. His fastball is very basic and average. He's, you know, he can get up to ninety one to ninety three miles per hour. Um, and uh, nothing really stands out with his ratings. They all seem to be basic. And now if we take a look at his uh, statistics, um, he's, he's had a very inconsistent time. If we go into his BNN page, we can get, a, get better summaries this way. Um, so he pitched for... Um, uh, for Cincinnati in 2017, um, had a 10.50 ERA in six innings. Um, again, we're not, we're not going to judge him so much on that just because that's a very short, short sample, just six innings. Um, although he's our closer, so that, that's probably just, uh, what, a few games, um, not six games where he came in in a relief um, effort. He's had an okay minor league career. You know, if you take a look at the different minor league levels, if you take a look at, and they're all grouped based on the league. So this is the International League, the Southern League. Um, if you go through all that, you could see he's pitched okay in the minor leagues. So that, when you take a look at his BNN, the picture doesn't look too bad as it looks when you're looking at this page here. So, I'm um, thinking, does this guy need to be um, in single A? Or can he be in advanced or even double A? Um, that's something we can look into. So, what I do now, because we just promoted somebody else to double A. Uh, we just promoted a closer to double A, which was Andy Beltre. Um, let's take a look to see who else is out here in double A and, um, and doesn't need to be here. So again, we're still looking at pitchers because we, we have a pitcher that we think has decent capability and decent potential. All right. So you can, you can have different views, um, when I use this view, it shows me these, uh, their ages, and uh, we've got a couple 32-year-olds uh, in double uh, A, and the question is, is this where they belong? So I just clicked on uh, John of Valesquez, 32-year-old, um, um, right-handed relief pitcher, who's currently in double A. Um, uh, 
Taking a look at his stats. Looks like he's um, he's struggled a bit uh, in the past. You can see in 2018, uh, advanced A. I mean, that was just an inning, one and two third innings. But if you look at 2017, 2016, 2015, um, he he played in independent baseball. Um, independent baseball teams uh, are almost minor minor league level teams that are not affiliated with the ma with uh, major league baseball. And um, so some guys who don't make it to uh, to the show, um, some of them when they need to find a place where it's competitive or if they need uh, to stay active and playing so that they can show that they belong, you know, to um, they belong to be called up uh, in the majors. Some of them do go to uh, play for independent leagues. This guy played for an independent uh, team in 2016 and 2017. Prior to that, in 2015, he played in a AAA team, and uh, he pitched. Uh, his pitching um, ERA was 5.74, so nothing great, nothing outstanding. Uh, he's 32 years old. My thoughts and feelings are: we probably don't need him um, at this level. I've got another 32-year-old in uh, Avi Guerra. Abiguera seems to have a slightly better history uh, in pitching. If we take a look at his different levels in the MLB, his total MLB pitching career um, out of 177 and two-third innings, his ERA has been 2.99. 2 so that's something, okay, something decent. That means this is somebody, even though he's in AA right now, um, he does have the capability uh, to even on, a, on an emergency to come out and pitch in the MLB. The other 32 year old that I'm looking at is Daniel Moscos. Let's go into his BNN page. Daniel is 32 years old, uh, left handed uh, relief pitcher. Um, let's take a look at his career in 2011, pitched for Pittsburgh uh, in 24 and one third innings. His area was 2.96. Uh, in uh, 31 games that is so not crazy not too bad um, and then um, he spent quite a bit of time in the minor league systems um, played okay in most of them except for um, the Carolina League um, in 110 and one-third innings his year it was 5.95 um, but after that or before that, I can't tell, you know, which was which. He seems to have uh, settled down. So he's had uh, some inconsistencies as well. But again, he seems to have um, pitched well in the MLB. So the one guy that I can say once after we've, we've looked at all these 32-year-olds that I feel um, doesn't really cut it yet is John Velasquez. So... What I'm going to do is we're going to demote John to our um, low A Batavia. John is not happy. His face changed. But I'm sorry. We need to do this. We've got to make room for, for decent star players. All right. So now that we've demoted him, you could see now when you go to rosters and transactions, we've got uh, room for one more player. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to Greensboro, uh, Alejandro Chasin, and we're going to send him to Double A. So promote to Double A Jacksonville, and he is excited. So what we can do, because I know Batavia is already, uh, yeah, see, they already passed their limit. Um, so what I can do is. We are going to bump up somebody else who doesn't, uh, who deserves a chance to, um, to move up. And um, who might that be? So somebody needs to go to um, Greensboro because we just moved um, Alejandro from Greensboro all the way to AA, Jacksonville. 
So now we go back to Batavia uh, Mac Dogs, and we're gonna take a look to see who can we call up. So I'm not gonna call up Edward Cabrera. I I still feel like, given his age and the amount of time he spent pitching, I think he needs maybe another season in in uh, lower A. Uh, we've got a center fielder. We need a pitcher because we just we have to do one for one trades because we send back down a pitcher. Um, so we got a 23 year old in Sam Perez. Uh, Sam Perez has got a two star potential, um, and uh, at 23, he hasn't pitched really well over the last few years in uh, single A's. Um, he's also had a stint in double A. So. We're going to just go ahead and bump him up to Greensboro um, for now. And uh, we can balance this out now. All right, so then we're going to go to Greensboro pitching, make sure that, um, you know, every team is balanced out. So you always make sure that your teams are balanced, meaning you've got just the number of players that need to be there, not more, not less. And that's that. So, um, in summary, guys, that's generally how you go about managing your minor league teams. Teams, sorry. Um, when you get a moment um, before you start your season, you want to do what I just did for every one of your minor league teams. You want to go in and and look at players' uh, potential um, and promote and demote guys that don't need to be there. When I'm doing a bit of cleanup. I call it house cleaning sometimes. I go into my AAA and AA team and I take a look at players that don't need to be there. Now, when I have time, I do this for every single team. Um, I go in and I check guys. I look at the ages just like we did. I go through guys like this who are, you know, I already checked these guys out. They're 32 years old. Um, they're sitting in AA team. You, you want to find out why. Do they still have something in them that maybe we could use? Um, if not, release them or send them down to um, a team if you have less players somewhere in your lower level teams uh, sometimes some teams could just use a veteran um, you know it helps to develop um, in real life and i think there's some effect to it in uh, out of the park baseball but i'm a guy who loves realism i like immersion i like uh, to believe that what you do here is similar to what you would do in real life so um, so sometimes I'll take some of these 32 year olds instead of releasing them if they've if they've shown some some potential in the past um, I may just move them down Until when I really really running out of space running out of room and I need to develop guys Then I'll just release people who are too old and are no longer cutting it because let's face it by the time you're hitting 29 30 your chances of playing in the MLB diminishes significantly. So, and the reason for that is that you don't develop as much. So what we're looking at right now should be who you are for the moment. And that's why when you're looking at double A teams, single A teams, I mean, double A and triple A, you look at a combination of three things. Like I said, you look at, of course, you look at the potential, you look at the overall right now, um, you can combine those two, so you call it overall ratings, so future and now. Uh, you also look at the actual raw talent, which is the ratings, right? Uh, if you're looking at a player, um, the summary here, overall and potential, um, is, is a visual representation of the overall skills. You can also look at the individual ratings, which is their... Um, their raw natural talent and see if there's anything special that you find in a player um, and what I mean by special for example look at this guy he's a speedy uh, center fielder um, he's got his uh, defensive ratings for for center field is uh, just above average um, he has uh, just below average contact uh, can get to average contact so I'm not seeing anything special but he has got very good speed he has good uh, stealing ability and good base running ability um, and he also has uh, he's got some good defensive ability um, in center field right uh, if you look at his stats um, looks like he's 
performed well over the years, right? Take a look at his stats. He's even played, uh, debuted in the MLB last year. Um, he had uh, 64 plate appearances and had a 317 batting average, a 359 on base percentage, and a 317 slugging. So, even though his overall ratings don't look stellar, um, looks like he's had, uh, he's been able to deliver. So, he's currently playing in double A. So, when you look at those three things, you can better, better evaluate a player. You don't just look at one thing. When you're looking at guys, uh, rookies, they don't have any stats. You just trade, uh, drafted a guy. You're looking at his potential, and then you're looking at his raw natural talent, which are the ratings. That's how you do it, guys. Um, so, I can't think of much else. That's really a summary of how you manage your minor league teams. Um, I am always constantly looking at my triple a team because your triple a triple a team is the one team that has your players who are very close to joining the mlb um one thing to do is always come in here and take a look at your pitchers take a look at guys who are you know pitching well um get rid of guys who are who are you know older and not producing stats um, keep in mind though in your triple a teams you will have guys who are a bit older because your triple a team may have guys who just recently got demoted from your mlb team you may have guys who are just having a rough patch um, if you've been following our oakland a series you may see that uh, we've got some guys that we've had to demote even though their overall ratings and, and ability is is stellar but if they're not performing well if somebody is really not performing well then you don't want to just keep him on your team especially if you still have options on that person what are options options is um the number um the number of times that you have to to you to send somebody down to your minor league system um, and bringing them up to your major league system without exposing them to other teams. You get three options. Uh, 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 each player um, comes with three options um, in the MLB when before they ever, ever make it to the major league um, uh, team. The minute you get called up to a major league team, you've used up one option. And each option lasts, lasts, lasts for uh, one year. So when you call somebody up now they used one option but you can call them up and down as many times as you want during that one year and at the end of that year they've used one option next year they will have two options left if you call them up again next year the player will use up their second option and the cycle revolves and continues that way once a player has used up all their three options and they are currently playing in the MLB team, then if you want to demote them to the minor league uh, team, then you would have to expose them to what's called waivers. Waivers means when you put them there, they get publicized, and all the other teams in the MLB will get to know about that player, and they can claim him. If they claim him and they're successful, there's an order. The MLB decides how, who wins if there's multiple teams trying to claim one player. Usually, the team with the lowest um, um, stats uh, or the finish, the lowest position previously, gets um, higher preference to, to uh, claim a player from waivers. And uh, if you claim a player from waivers, he has to join your um, active roster team. So, he has to play for your MLB team. You can't demote him down. Otherwise, you go through the same process because he's no longer, doesn't have any more options. And you have to continue paying him the salary that he was earning for the other team. So that's what that means. So you have to be careful when you're managing your minor league teams. Um, how do you know um, a player is out of options or has options? Well, if you look at the bottom here, there's a legend. And uh, when you're playing out of the park baseball, this legend will show you what um, the, the each next to everybody's name, you will see symbols. Those symbols mean something. So when you see, um, for example, this guy here, that symbol he's got, it means that uh, he's a Rule 5 eligible. Rule 5 eligible essentially means, um, so 
there's usually the draft that's held in June and in December there's what's called the rule 5 draft this is a draft where um, all the guys who are in the minor league system who've achieved a certain number of years um, <coughs> excuse me, um, of playing in the minors become rule 5 eligible so that means during that draft other teams can draft these players and and get get them from your minor league system it's designed this way so that teams do not just hoard a whole bunch of talent and players in their minor league system if you don't want a player <coughs> excuse me if you don't want a player to be rule 5 eligible or if you want to protect him during the rule 5 then you have to put him in your 40 man roster all right so you may be wondering what is a 40 man roster if you're new to this well i'll explain that to you the 40 man roster is a combination of two things it has your active roster which is your mlb players the guys who are playing for your mlb team so the guys who are playing for miami marlins there's 25 of them because there's a 25 player limit so you can see here miami active roster 25 players out of 25 and then you get an additional 15 players who are still in your minor league system that can be added on and can be called upon at any time to come and play in an MLB game, anytime. So you cannot have a player play for an MLB team who's not on the 40-man roster. So it's a combination of your active roster plus 15 other players who are in your minor league system. So if you want to protect somebody from um, being a... Uh, drafted during the rule 5 draft in december then you have to put them in your 40-man roster so right here you can see this is our 40-man roster here the total of 40 players here okay now if you have a player who's on here and uh, who's on your 40-man roster and you you realize you know what this guy is no longer good I, I i have no more use for him i don't see him developing like, you know, let's say Brad Zelga here. He's 38 years old. Um, he's actually a good pitcher, by the way, um, for the Marlins. As it didn't have a very good year um, uh, last year, but he's always been a good uh, relief pitcher. Uh, he's getting up there in age. Now, let's say I wanted to demote him. Um, Brad Zelga is already used up all, all his uh, options. How you know that? You go into the Contracts tab and you take a look at the minor league options. So he's got two years left according to this um, to this game. Um, now, he probably got re-signed at some point um, or his um, um, minor league free agency uh, years got reset at some point if he ever left the team or the league. So if we take a look at another player, for example, let's go anybody. Um, he's got one option left. So we've got a whole bunch of guys that still have options left in it. In uh, uh, Urena, he's got uh, okay. So Jose Urena. If I wanted to demote Jose Urena to our minor league uh, team, let's say I wanted to t send him down to AAA um, because he's not playing very well right um, I would have to expose him to do what's called uh, um, designate him for assignment and then waive him uh, put him on waivers so I would have to waive him and designate him for assignment by doing that I put him on the waivers list which is the waiver and DFA nowadays uh, there's only three days um, to clear waivers and if a player clears waivers, then you can send him back down. You can now outright option him down to AAA. Um, if he doesn't clear waivers, then he could be picked or claimed by another team. Now, if he's on irrevocable waivers, then you have nothing you can do. If he's being claimed by another team, then you just he's, he's gone. Uh, if you have revocable waivers, which is another option, then if you notice other teams want to claim him, you can pull him out and bring him back to your team. Now, I mean, you, 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 Jose Reyna wasn't the best example here because he's still in AAA, but 
it, it's the same idea. You get you get the concept. All right, so that's how the minor league system works. Um, these are all the different teams um, that are part of the organization for Miami Marlins. You've got the active roster. You've got the 40-man roster. Again, it's not a separate team or anything like that. It's a combination of players in the active roster and another 15 players from different minor league teams. Most teams usually will have majority of the players that are in their 40-man roster will come out of their AAA uh, team. And then you might have a few players from AA that are part of the 40-man roster. Um, but you'll never see like single-A players who are part of a 40-man roster. I mean, it can happen, but usually you don't see that. And um, yeah, that is that, guys. I mean, um, you continue to play out your games. And um, as you play out your games, um, you'll have needs. Um, those needs could uh, could be you may have a player who is not playing very well or is struggling, um, and you may need to send him down. And uh, when you do that, then it's another opportunity to call up a player from your minor league team. So, for example, right now we're playing uh, this game with the Marlins, and... Um, Let's take a look at uh, stats now. You know, we've got guys who are struggling here. So, for example, Braxton Lee. Uh, I can look at this and be like, okay, where are we? We are in June, and Braxton Lee has just been struggling. Um, he's 24 years old. Let's take a look at his contract. He's still got three options left in him. He's a center fielder. Um seems to have struggled so far since the season started so we probably th were thinking okay it's time to send him down to the minor league uh, uh, team most likely to triple a and let him go in there and develop now if we do send him down what are we losing so what i usually look for is what position does he play what is his primary position he's a center fielder he can play left field and right field so he's bas basically an outfielder so if we send him down then we need to just try and replace him with another outfielder. That's what I usually do. You don't have to. You could send him down and bring up a short stop. You can bring up whatever, whomever you want. But for now, I don't feel like I have a need for any other position. And if I'm losing um, his depth because he's an outfielder, then I need to bring in another outfielder to compensate. So, so we're going to send him down. Why am I going there? Uh, transactions. And we're going to say, you know what? We're going to demote him to AAA. Boom, there you go. See, now all of a sudden, team has changed. And if you take a look at uh, his name here, Braxton Lee is a center fielder, plays for New Orleans Baby Cakes in the Pacific Coast AAA team. And then if you take a look at our um, Miami active roster, now we're down a player. It says 24 out of 25. So we're going to go down to New Orleans. And because he's a center fielder, so he's a position player, we're going to take a look at our position players. Um, first thing I do is I like to have my manager set up the players so that they plug in everybody who needs to be a starter so that I can look at those guys first. Um, if a guy is not pegged to be a starter, you're thinking there's probably a reason why should you be promoting a non-starter. But again, you don't have to use that logic per se. That's just sort of how I do it right away. Um, I, take, I take a look at stats. I look at who is playing well. And lo and behold, there's JB Shuck. JB has been playing really well, but for some reason, because of his ratings, um, the manager at this team doesn't think that he should be a starter. But he's already had 135 plate appearances. Um, his batting average is 331, on base is 381, slugging is um, 413. So let's have a closer look at JB. So. JB has already uh, played in the MLB, so he's no not a rookie. He's not making a debut or anything like that. Um, he's had two seasons um, so far in our AAA team. Last year, um, he had uh, 475 plate appearances, which is excellent, and uh, 259 batting average, a 325 uh, on base percentage, and a 368 slugging. Uh, his WAR. Uh, which is the wins above replacement is 1.2. That was from last year. 
and uh, this year um, again he's uh, so far been playing really well uh, what are his positions he can play first base left field center field and right field so we've got another outfielder who's got decent stats and decent potentials um, you can make this easier for yourself also you can actually just filter this with all the outfielders so you're not you're not looking at the whole universe all right so Braxton Lee we sent him down uh, now we're thinking who else can we call up and um, right off the bat I'm thinking JB Shuck seems to be um, a worthy candidate to be called up just because he's playing really well you know his uh, his ratings are nothing stellar but regardless of his ratings he's, he's playing well um, so we're gonna promote him to Miami uh, this player cannot be put on active roster he's not on the 40 man all right so so this is fantastic now you get to see what do you do when this happens so JB is not part of our 40 man roster that means he cannot be sent up to play for Miami we need first to put him on a, on the um, 40 man roster but unfortunately the 40 man roster is already full okay so this is what we do now if your 40 man roster is already full we're going to come in here and take a look to see um, who is not worthy of being in the 40 man roster um, and and how do you do that well we're going to just go one by one we're going to check a look at uh, each player and see um, who doesn't need to be here and what I do first is I take a look at the age again I look at older guys um, who are underperforming uh, that way uh, chances are the move that we're about to do it's going to expose these guys to the waivers now if they're older and past their prime there's a good chance that um, other teams may not find them to be um, so lucrative um, so we got uh, Wei and Chen He's a starting pitcher. We need him. He's pitching well. Um, we've got Brad Zilga. <clears throat> he's 38, but boy, he's uh, he's he's got um, closer ability there. So he's playing well. So we've got one of these guys here. Um, let's see. These guys have a low um, rating and low potential. So a candidate that I'm identifying quickly is Scott Van Slyke. Why Scott? Uh, he's 31 years old. Um, he's a um, outfielder uh, for the most part, at least primarily. He plays left field and uh, right field, and he can also play first. Uh, when I look at his MLB, uh, performance he's um, he's been struggling last year and this year I um, mean this year a small sample just 10 at bats 11 plate appearances but last year he had uh, 48 plate appearances and just had a 122 batting average the year before he also struggled in triple-a um, so nothing exceptional about Scott uh, he has been struggling over the last uh, few years and um, he could be the one guy that I can uh, that I don't need to have on my 40 man roster so we're gonna wave and we're gonna so you're warned here by waving and designating Scott he's gonna be put on irrevocable waivers so we're gonna say yes and um, that's that so if you take a look at your Miami 40 man roster here we now have room for one more player we got 39 out of 40 you don't always want your 40 man roster to always be full because you run into these problems where you got to decide who who you're gonna designate and wave now if you go to your waivers and designate for assignment take a look at that they Scott Van Scal he's been put on here um, sorry it's seven days for the waivers um, um, it's three days for waivers uh, seven days for you to designate the player for assignment so uh, so he'll clear waivers in three days but 
we have up to seven days to decide what to do with him. After the seventh day, we have to either put him back on our active roster, release him, or trade him. So, so it gives you it's a place where you can put players uh, while you decide or think of what to do with them if you don't want to make the decision today. So now we know we've got room. Um, we can go back to New Orleans and um, take a look at our outfielders again. And we got JB Shuck. Now we can put JB Shuck on the 40 man roster. Boom. And now we can call him up to go and play in Miami. Look at that. Now he's happy. He was all mad before. And now he's getting a chance to play uh, in Miami. And then you can come into your lineups and you can tell your coach or your bench coach to set up your lineups you can make set them up yourself i usually do it myself if you don't want to um, have your bench coach bench coach that you've hired let them set them set up your lineups for you so there you go we've uh, made some transactions now our 40 man roster is back to being full again now it's 40 and, uh, and that's that so so that's generally um how you manage minor league systems um this was a long video we've covered a whole bunch of stuff um i definitely welcome you guys to um, ask questions if you got questions you know uh, comments um let me know whatever you've got if you if there's a segment uh within this segment that you would like me to focus on because it is complex there's a lot of things to do when it comes to the minor league uh, system but I will tell you something, um, if it wasn't for the minor league system and, and if out of the park baseball had not given us this depth, um, I don't think I'd be playing this game. I think the realistic approach to the game by having the entire minor league system in your disposal um, is what makes this game um, addictive. Uh, it is fun. I love it. I mean, you can go into your teams these are your teams that you manage and you have these players to your disposal you know you can go into them and you can promote guys where you want them to you know whatever I mentioned it's just my own strategies you can employ your own you can have your own way of thinking um, uh, look at that our advanced a team has a whole bunch of guys with high potential but they all in the 22 um, age ranges we're gonna leave them there let them develop let them play um, we just gotta make sure that they're part of a starting lineup and if they're not um, you can actually force it and uh, how you do that well um, you go into strategy you go into player strategy and you pick a player you let's say we want to force this guy to be a starter um, so we want um, we want Ben to be a starter here. So you can come in here and you can force him to be a starter in any position. Uh, force start at a shortstop, for example. Force start at face to first base. If I do that, and then if you go into your lineups and I ask my manager to set up my lineups, he's going to have... Um, I can't even remember who it was. Or oh, Eric Gutierrez, sorry. <laughs> Eric Gutierrez, there it is. And you can see he's highlighted with a red uh, mark now as a first baseman. He's been now placed as the starting uh, first baseman. You know, so you can, you don't have to, I mean, yes, I did say you, you leave your managers to make these decisions uh, as far as uh, who's going to start and who's not. But you can actually force these things. And then if you want to remove that, you can come back here bring him down and you could remove and say none and they will disappear and now your coach will decide you know who's gonna go where so again um it, it is so there's so much uh that it's it's almost impossible for me to cover everything on one video minor league uh, teams and the rules that accompany them can be complex but i'm hoping this video has made things a little bit easier has given you confidence to to try your hand in uh in making decisions um, if these things that are not clear, if I miss something, something doesn't make sense, please post your comments um, and uh, I'll reply back to you for sure. And um, that's about it. I appreciate you guys watching the longest video I've ever made. And 
I'm hoping that this was quite helpful for some people. All right, thanks a lot, guys.